So my name is Susie Savov. Uh, I graduated on spring 2023, and my role right now is a ministry support to regional directors uh, in a ministry called Decision Point. Uh, so at the time of COVID, when it just started, I actually um, was sitting at home in Israel and I basically um, asked the Lord, what's the next step for me? I just finished uh, my army service and I started a new job and everything was seemed like it was a very um, unknown. And because of that, I was like, the Lord, like, you know, Lord, tell me what's my next step? Like, what do you want me to do? Uh, and then he mentioned, uh, he basically reminded me about uh, CFNI from a friend of mine that mentioned it before to me, uh, that she came here to study. And um, basically, I looked it up online. I read the, uh, you can say, core values of Christ for the Nations, and everything just seemed perfect for me. And I just continued praying about it, and I really felt the Lord called me to come for um, basically three years. That was the first you know, thing that I heard the Lord telling me, and to basically um, apply for fall 2021. And that was a year and a half before, um, basically, fall 2021. So um, there was still time. It wasn't like a semester before or anything like that. So um, basically, the Lord just spoke to me clearly, and I, I had peace about it. I told my parents, and they had peace about it. Um, and it was just, um, uh, just a, a time to basically work now towards my visa and in um, all the logistics uh, and to just pray and trust the Lord that he will provide all the needs. Before I came to see and I, I didn't know what to expect really. I just knew that I'm obeying the Lord. Um, I just knew that um, that God called me to come here, that he made all those miracles basically, uh, you know, for me to come here, to arrive uh, to the States, uh, to provide a student visa, to provide the money, uh, specifically just for the first semester even. Um, and I think that because I've never been to the States before, that was also a big, big, um, you can say like, you know, I didn't know what's going on. I didn't know what's going to happen. Um, but, um, but God provided everything, and he provided people, he provided friends, and he um, gave me peace, um, and he provided, yeah, the money to come, which was also a big, big miracle. So I remember one mo moment that um, I was sitting in chapel uh, on the floor. I had my own section on the <laughs> uh, after the Great Divide on the right side, uh, right there in the back, and um, and there was just a perfect moment in worship, very, very, like not too, too many lights and, and music going on, just simple singing. Um, and I just remember feeling so at peace. Um, and the Lord, like I was, I was very uh, emotional <laughs> during that time. I think I was just trying to figure out certain things, like what's the next step and, and what should I do? And, um, um, and the Lord just was there with me and um, I just, I really felt like I was laying uh, on his chest and listening to his heartbeat. And I, I think that there's the song, I forgot like the, um, like, I forgot how it goes, but, uh, but it's basically listening to his heartbeat um, and just uh, being in his arms. And that moment just gave me so much peace for everything else that I felt like was going on. And, um, and that was, I think, one moment that I would never forget, just the peace that I had that I always want to come back to, uh, knowing that the Lord was there with me and He's always there with me. Um, that's just one. Um, I have so many other stories that I can share, but yeah, that was a very special moment for me. Sometimes you would wake up and you would be very tired and you don't want to go to chapel. Uh, but then when you actually get there and you experience the glory of God, you experience His presence, uh, it's something that I cannot even describe. And I think that's the number one thing that I've heard from other alumni before. And, and also um, I agree now as being an alumni that it's one of the things that I miss the most. And I think even just the community, the... Um, uh, you can say accountability, the, ch the challenges that come with it, and um, also as being in an array, I was in an array, and that was the greatest time that I've had uh, leading other girls and, um, and coaching them and being there with them uh, through difficulties and uh, crazy moments sometimes, but um, I actually, most of my time in SIF and I was in an array, so uh, right after my first semester, I obviously joined and I stayed until the end, so um, that was just a great time too. And I think um, 
yeah, I miss I miss that too. I miss just having that uh, uh, basically fellowship with the other arrays too, and with the other students, the other girls, having new basically new students coming every semester, um, and getting to know more of them and more of their stories and. And also the nations. I love the nations. That's so, I have so many things. So I miss the nations. I miss like seeing so many people from different countries and um, and getting to know them, getting to know their uh, culture, their language. Um, I started studying a little bit of Portuguese while I was here, so that was something that I really uh, miss, definitely. And that was a big, big encouragement to study other cultures and other languages. Uh, something I miss the most about Sif and I is the worship, the chapel time. Uh, that was a really, really amazing uh, time to just experience the presence of the Lord um, and just being, uh, yeah, in His presence, um, learning about His kindness and His faithfulness. I think one of the biggest challenges uh, that I've experienced in CFNI was uh, people. <laughs> I love people. I was always an extrovert. Um, I love, like I said, learning about other people, other cultures. Uh, but I think maybe because I was also an RA, that was something that was very tiring for me sometimes to deal with others. But the Lord really gave me a lot of um, just... Uh, patience and um, and love uh, for other students, for younger girls that maybe didn't experience um, the life that I've experienced, but came for the right reasons to see if and I came to study, to get closer to the Lord, and that I can be part of that journey uh, that God is preparing for them. Uh, it just taught me a lot about um, leadership and about ministry and, and just about life, how we're called to be as, as Christians. So, yeah. That's great. So my role right, right now, uh, it's called Ministry Support to Regional Directors uh, in a ministry called Decision Point, which um, what we do is that we basically walk alongside other uh, students in middle schools and high schools uh, all across America uh, to basically encourage them and guide them in sharing the gospel and using their voice and their faith to reach their school um, basically with the gospel uh, to other students uh, that need the Lord as much as we all need him and they themselves. So um, what we do is that we also help them with um, knowing their legal rights, so knowing that they're allowed to share their faith on campus in public schools um, and how they can do it in a, in a way that um, also will be uh, beneficial for, uh, for the Lord, for the gospel, for them to actually um, get to hear the gospel and also uh, react. Uh, so part of what I'm doing is that I'm helping the campus ministry, uh, those that actually go uh, and basically coach the students and, uh, and walk with them, uh, help with anything uh, administrative, so anything that they need uh, to basically help them to focus more on the side of the um, coaching and the campus ministry itself and less about the logistics and the administrative uh, things just for them to be able to basically do their part the best way that they can uh, and what God called them to be and um, basically support. So that's one of my, uh, what I'm doing. And I actually started uh, second part of my job, which is uh, being actually part of the DFW team uh, of Decision Point, uh, helping to coach students in schools and making connections with churches, connecting churches to the students, and basically for them to have um, the support that they need to be able to reach their school, wherever they are. I think what the, what CF and I taught me uh, to regards to ministry um, and what I'm doing right now, what it helped me with, is a lot of just learning what the importance is of the gospel, learning the importance of the Word of God, and, um, and not being ashamed of the gospel, not being ashamed of your faith, and fighting for your rights also, which is important, especially coming from a different country to the U.S., um, learning about the culture here as being a student here, and with that, wanting to help other students in public schools, uh, in middle schools and high schools, uh, to basically know their rights um, and basically share their faith with other students in their school. And I think that was um, one thing that I've learned in uh, Christ for Nations, the importance of the gospel, the importance of God's word, and how it can really change lives. 
so when I graduated from CIF and I and I started the life after, which is always a scary thing before you um, leave. Uh, I think everybody is always worried about what's the next step, um, what should I do, what, what God has for me. And uh, the only thing that I knew is that I'm getting married. <laughs> that was the only thing. So I was engaged at the time of uh, my last semester, and I was getting married with now my husband. Um, and uh, for me, it was a big uh, change also to graduate and get married the next week and just staying here in the U.S., which wasn't the plan at first. Um, and I was always uh, wanting to go back to Israel, and it's still something that is on my heart, my husband's heart, to go back to um, minister and serve the Lord in Israel, uh, to be there with the small uh, believer Messianic community, uh, and uh, and we're still praying for the opportunity, but for right now we're here and we're serving the Lord here. So. Um, I think that it was very hard to just um, not wake up in the morning and go to chapel. That was number one. Um, I think <laughs> thing that was a little like what? Like I'm not. I don't have worship every day. I don't experience like uh, you know the the presence of the Lord that maybe um, vividly. You know, like before. I still experience His presence. He's still there with me, but it's different. Um, so. That was very, very hard also, I think, uh, finishing Sif and I and going to the next step and just trusting him. I think trust is the biggest thing, trusting him uh, with uh, my job and even my green card process and all of that, you know, that I had to trust him that he will provide uh, for me and my husband. Um, so, yeah. So my vision for the future is to go back to my people, uh, going back to Israel, the country that I was born and raised in, uh, and to continue serving the Lord there, especially right now when um, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of um, people that are missing hope, that feel like there's no hope for, for the future, for, for peace uh, and for love. Um, I know that the answer and the solution for everything is Jesus, it's Yeshua. And uh, he is the only one that, is, that can bring peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Um, and because of that, I have hope that only through him, only through our faith, through sharing our faith, through evangelizing and through serving the community in Israel, um, that's the only way that uh, there can be peace and there can be hope and love. Uh, and, and we all deserve to know the Lord because the Lord died for all of us. So my hope is to go back home to Israel with my husband um, and to serve uh, the Messianic community and also the um, other Jewish um, and Arab uh, brothers and sisters that we have in Israel. One of the uh, professors that uh, really impacted my time here was uh, Dr. Saif. Uh, he was, um, he's Jewish like me, and that was I think the number one thing that connected me with him, just his boldness and um, like how he just didn't care about <laughs> uh, what other people think. And um, he was just true to himself, to his culture and to how he grew up and, and raised up. And he always gave uh, a Jewish um, mindset basically to all of his uh, teachings and how he uh, basically taught us the Old Testament and the New Testament survey classes. Uh, he always brought a little bit of the Jewishness uh, perspective of things. And I really, really enjoyed that because it made me feel also at home and like somebody understands me also. And I also learned from him a lot, things that maybe I didn't know. Uh, so that was really, really cool. Um, also, I loved uh, the class with, um, with Miss Sandy. I had a couple of classes with her, but number one, I think, was um, the book of Proverbs. I enjoyed that class because um, I really, really uh, learned a lot about just um, wisdom and Christian living, how we should live, and uh, just instructions for life for um, for women, uh, mothers, and uh, and also. Uh, uh, wives and also for men, of course, you know, um, they studied, um, you know, for that. And I think there was a lot of good points that she brought up that we could learn about how to really live for the Lord through every single thing in our life as a being, like I said, women and mothers and wives um, and just learning how to really serve the Lord through that and uh, through our family 
uh, future children, uh, anything like that. And I think that was very, very impactful, just learning how to live in wisdom of the Lord. And um, the last one will be Pastor Adam, Adam McCain, <laughs> which I shout out to Pastor Adam. I think that um, Adam was just one of the um, the most, Im- like, uh, just, I, I'm trying to find the word. <laughs> Pastor Adam was one of the most passionate, I think, and most uh, straightforward and honest people uh, that I've met here uh, as being a professor. Uh, I remember a couple of classes with him that I've had, but he always, always just preached the Word of God, and I loved it. I loved that he was passionate about it, that he was so simple about it, um, and just helped us really see the Word of God as it is, and not to... Um, just make up things, but he was just very honest, and I really, um, I loved it. It was really touching for me. I want to encourage first the students right now uh, that are in CFNI currently, hug your international student friends. (laughs) Hug them and let them know that they're loved wherever they are right now, um, and that it's okay to be homesick. I think that's one thing that I've experienced um, especially my first semester. I think that was the hardest semester with being homesick. And um, yeah, and be there for them. Uh, Ask them how they're doing. Uh, That's number one thing that I would say. And also just use every moment that you have here. Cherish every moment that you have here. Um, Cherish the moments that you have in chapel, just worshiping the Lord, experiencing Him. And even when you don't feel like it, even when you don't feel like you even deserve to have a conversation with the Lord, um, He still deserves your praise. He still deserves that communication and and that that worship. Uh, It's not about you. It's about Him. So even if you don't like that specific song or you don't enjoy this specific uh, word uh, that is being sang, uh, it's not about you. It's about the Lord. So use it, cherish it, uh, and God will reward, reward you. He will reward you for everything that, um, that you've done and for all the worship that you gave to him. So uh, I think that's number one thing for, uh, for students and for alumni. I want to encourage alumni to keep going, to not give up on your faith. Everything that you experience in CFNI, it's not something that it's only the God of CFNI. But no, it's the God of all people. It's the God of you. It's your God. And he wants you also to, uh, to experience him every day. And because of that, don't give up. Don't give up on uh, things that, um, that he promised you that will happen while you were in CFNI. He still keeps his promises even outside of CFNI. Um, and keep pushing, keep going, serving him with everything that you do. Um, and like my favorite verse actually is uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, which is, um, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. So this is literally my, uh, my motto, you can say. I live by it because um, for me, full-time ministry doesn't mean that you work inside the church. It means that you serve the Lord with everything that you do. So even if you work in the marketplace, wherever you are, do it for the glory of God, and that's what counts. Lord, I just thank you for all the people that, are, um, that went through basically this time here in CFNI, that were students here that um, gave that part of their life, uh, this time of their life to you, Lord, for you to do what you, only you can do in their life. And I pray right now that um, you're gonna be with them, that you're gonna um, let them experience you and encounter you in a new way every day, that they're not gonna give up on you, even when they don't understand, even when they feel like they cannot do this on their own, Lord. I just pray that you'll be with, there with them, encourage them, um, just encounter them, Lord and guide them in everything that they go through, Lord. I pray for also all the alumni uh, right now that are like me, that went through Sif and I remember all the amazing things that you've done and all the promises that you, um, you promised. Please encourage us, Lord, to remember those promises and to believe that they will happen, that they will um, come true, that you really are the God of all miracles and that you can do it all. So if you promised, that will happen. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. In Yeshua's name, amen.